Thank you for joining us today and I hope to see you again at our future events. Well, welcome ladies and gentlemen. Ahmed told me it's time to start. Uh, so, <clears throat> allow me to start by acknowledging the Gadigal people of your nation as traditional owners of the land on which we stand and also pay our respects to the elders, both past and present. There are many important people here with us. We've got our three deans, but I will introduce them a bit later. We also got Mr. Ha uh, Karl Hartlepp, uh, Consul General of Austrian uh, Consulate here in Sydney, and uh, Mr. Mahmed Farakal, uh, Deputy Consul General uh, of, from uh, Egyptian Consulate here in Sydney. Uh, my name is Sepp Ozdowski and I work at Western, Western Sydney University. I'm also Chair of Australian Multicultural Council and I'm on the advisory board of Affinity. And for those uh, who never attended an Affinity function before, allow me briefly to introduce the organization. Affinity was formed by a group of young Muslim, Muslim Australians in 2000. <laughs> the aim is to promote multiculturalism and to foster intercultural and interfaith dialogue by building bridges between different groups in our society. To give you a brief idea about fantastic work they do, we've got a video with highlights <coughs> of their work in 2017, so I would ask that it's shown now. great career and it's wonderful to see them in the context of a great organization, Affinity. First of all, I'd like to thank our sponsors here, especially uh, Mr. Ahmed Polat. Thank you so much. Thank you too to the Foundation uh, for the opportunity to be here. Faith is so profoundly important for our development and humanitarian work. Because we've got some expertise here uh, that is, uh, when it's brought together, is extremely valuable. So I asked the Vice President Global of Education for Microsoft why. And those are the values that I would continue uh, to advocate being taught in law schools in this country. Uh, from a UN report describes Yemen is now the world's worst humanitarian crisis. Thank you all for, um, for being here. Thank you Ahmed and uh, the Affinity team uh, for allowing me to, to speak ladies and gentlemen. It's an absolute honour to be here tonight to help launch an exciting new lecture series focused on young people. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, Barack and the Affinity Intercultural Foundation, um, I'd like to acknowledge the fantastic work that you do in the community and um, bringing different cultures and people of different religious backgrounds together. I think it's fantastic. How human rights safeguards children and young people. This is indeed a commendable goal and I'm delighted to be here today to be part of that dialogue. In my view, Affinity is doing excellent work to inform and advance multicultural Australia to keep peace in this country. Congratulations to Affinity. Thank you, Affinity, for this wonderful opportunity. I, with Sev, laud the work of Affinity. Uh, there is no other organization working in the field of interreligious relation that does it the way they do it and promote actual encounter of an ordinary sort between people of all sorts of diversities. I think it's heartwarming. It's one of the f few things in life that really continue to give me hope and joy. So what then I believe is that this identity politics to a large extent in India has not become obstacle for the development of democracy, but rather it has enriched the democracy. My day is very focused on thinking about that. Uh, we have, so we have a news conference at nine o'clock and then at half past two, which is the afternoon one is very much looking through to those evening digital sessions, but also of course the newspaper. Uh, can I just firstly just 
to say thank you to Affinity for the invitation to come along today. It's a great pleasure to be here this morning and obviously following in some very esteemed company. So it's a, it's, a, it's a great privilege for me to be here also to acknowledge my parliamentary colleague, Jenny Leong. It's fulfilling to an extent, but there's got to be something that's greater than that. And that's how I see my contribution into Affinity and what Affinity does. So Affinity stands for promoting multiculturalism, stands for promoting interfaith dialogue, stands for promoting uh, good things in our community. Our speaker tonight asked me, um, as we were talking before, so are you involved with this organisation? And I said, yes I am, because I believe in what they do. And I'm very proud of them. I'm proud to be on the board. I want to thank Ahmed and your team for um, inviting uh, me to be along tonight. I have been here before and I've enjoyed it. This is probably my third time. And, and like Mary said, you know, it's that, and I think somebody actually on the DVD said, it's that opportunity for people who we live everyday lives just to be together and actually get to know each other and um, see each other as people first and foremost. So it's a really amazing thing that you're doing. Thank you so much. I think Affinity is a great organisation. I was going to wander around and talk, but I realised you only get to be on the video if you have the Affinity sign behind you. So I'm going to stay right in front of it. Sport is one of those um, codes that binds us in, in ways that are really quite significant. It also is a subject of deep and passionate division, and here I must declare first. <laughs> <laughs> the academies are a program to support and empower Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students to take control of their future through in-school and after-school support and we are so proud of our contribution to helping improve the educational outcomes for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities of Western Sydney. And I've seen this uh, networking non-for-profit organisation go from its humble beginnings, working with the grassroots of Australia, and to now where we are creating dialogue with all Australians from all walks of life. And I'm very glad that Affinity has brought us together and brought us together with you. Thank you all very much for coming. I pay my respects to the indigenous people of our continental country uh, and I pay my respects to uh, all the people who are connected with affinity. And I think if Ataturk were around today he would thoroughly approve people reaching out, uh, seeking to understand each other and in particular in countries of the book. But we must be vigilant all the time to protect our human rights and of all our sisters and brothers in this community. Many thanks to Affinity for inviting me to come along and talk to you about probably my favourite topic to talk about, which is the Anthropocene. And I think we've seen two diverse law schools here. It's important that um, law schools are different uh, and in some respects that they stick to their knitting, that they, they deal with what they're most expert at. Creating better cohesive relationships and really making it a safe and I think a very happy place to live. And I think it gels very nicely with Ahmet's affinity theme because it's so related. It's, it's about restoring and promoting, I think, strong and healthy relationships throughout the community. What we tried to do at the Bank Sound Poetry Slam and what we've been successful in doing is helping people find their stories and, and express themselves in a way that is cathartic for them. Looking to the future in terms of where these problems can originate, so part of this campaign to stop domestic or family violence has actually been targeted at young children. Now, I'm not going to pretend for one second we got it right or that we still have it right, but we got a lot better at it. We introduced things such as domestic violence liaison officers. We've talked a little bit about education, but um, actually we should be doing this with kids when they are at the very youngest age. Um, it's too late to start when they're teenagers. This is such an honour to be here tonight with the esteemed names that sort of the select term before me. It is very much a privilege and thank you to Ahmed, Burak and Ernest for having me here tonight. I think that what White is suggesting is that protesting has become a meaningless fad, that it is seen to be too readily engaged in without bringing about meaningful change. Once again, thank you for attending today. I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much. Lovely day. What a fantastic lineup of people, so many different people, but also so many different ideas, but everything organized around the issue of 
advancing human rights, advancing community cohesion, living well in Australia. And I think this year we also started very strongly. Today we have three deans and in a way it's a new series dealing with legal schools and what legal schools are doing in our society. Our speakers will be talking about globalizing Australian law schools today. So first one is Professor Colin Picker, who joined University of Wollongong in 2017 as Dean of Law. And in 2018, he added to his position title of Pro Vice Chancellor. He taught earlier at the University of New South Wales Law School, where he was Director of China International Business and Economic Law Initiative, as well as Associate Dean. And prior to it, he worked in the United States at the University of Missouri in Kansas City Law School. He entered academia in 2000 and first started practicing law in DC. He published widely, mainly on international <coughs> economic law and on the, corp uh, on the comparative law. Our second speaker is Professor George Williams, AO who is the Dean of, and he's also Anthony Mason Professor and Cientia Professor at University <coughs> of New South Wales. George doesn't need too much introduction. He's well-known media commentator on legal issues. He was a columnist for Sydney Morning Herald and Can uh, Canberra Times. He was also analyst for ABC. Currently, he's columnist for The Australian. His most important books include uh, Australian Constitutional Law and Theory, the Oxford Companion to the High Court of Australia, and Human Rights under the Australian Constitution. He also practices law. He appeared as barrister in the High Court in many cases involving freedom of speech, freedom from racial discrimination, and relating to the rule of law. And our panel will be facilitated by Emeritus Professor Ron McCallum from the University of Sydney. Professor McCallum EO studied law at Monash University, graduating in 72. After teaching at Monash for 18 years, he moved to Sydney in 1993, where he was appointed to full professorship at the University of Sydney. And on personal law, allow me to mention that Professor McCallum was the first totally blind person to be appointed to full professorship at any Australian or New Zealand university. He also served as a dean at the University of Sydney Law School between 2000 and 2007. And in January 2011, when he retired, he was awarded by the Senate of University of Sydney the title of Emeritus Professor. He also made an officer of the Order of Australia in 2006 for his services to Treasury Education, for industrial relations advice to governments, and for assistance to visually impaired persons. Between 2008 and 2014, Professor McCallum also served on the UN Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disability, and between 2011 and 2012, he was the chair of the UN Committee of Chairs of all UN treaty bodies. Without any further ado, I will welcome Professor McCallum to start the panel. <coughs> 